All right, everyone, I just wanted to go over a few things with the actual intercooler water sprayer setup. I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna move all the way over, and then we're gonna get into several more details that I just wanna to touch on. So right here, we have the main power harness. You have a master relay here that sits inside the cabin, just beyond the firewall. And then you have your ring terminals that will go out to the negative and positive side of the battery. It is fused right here. And then you have a single white wire that's gonna go into the cabin as well, and that is gonna trigger the relay. And when you turn the car to accessory or power on, it will actually send the power through this wire to the relay, turning it on and keeping it on while the car is running. So once that happens, it's gonna send signal here, it's gonna power on your main relay. And the other side, we have here a two pin connector that is gonna send power out to this harness right here, which is the brains of the operation. This is the main bulk harness out here. So let's go and touch on that one now. Positive and negative is gonna come in here from the main power harness. This is what does all of the thinking. You have a relay here for auto mode, you have a relay here for manual spray mode, and then you have a timer relay, which is actually adjustable up to 30 seconds. However, this is preset to two seconds, and I don't recommend setting it even further than that. The factory option is actually set to two seconds on the STI. Your power is gonna come in through here, that's positive and negative. And then on this side, we actually have a boost sensor for auto mode. And this boost sensor is a switch right here that goes into a bracket we have custom made and then a nipple for your hose that's gonna go out to a reference location on either the intake manifold, wherever you choose inside the engine bay. So this is actually pretty interesting. Um, it's got some weight to it, it's pretty rugged. You can actually pu pull this rubber boot off and you can put an Allen key in and adjust the PSI or the pressure level in which this is triggered. Now, I have this set to roughly around 13 to 14 PSI. If you're running higher boost levels or you're constantly in higher boost levels than that, you can adjust it. It does have a minimum and a maximum that it can go to, but I suggest leaving it at the 14 PSI for most. Now, you could run a different switch than this. However, this one is tried and true. We've been running this in the two test vehicles, including my own vehicle, and it's been running for, in my own car, I'd say three or four years now, and the two test vehicles, both a year and a half, and it has zero issues. This is good for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of cycles uh, actuating inside there. So we know that it works and we trust it. So this is a really, really nice setup. This one's actually ready to go. Uh, there's some PTFE tape in here, but this would be mounted inside the cabin underneath the dash somewhere. Where that connects on here, And now we can see that's connected and you could just mount these up like so. Moving over to where it comes down under the panel to the buttons, you have here connector for a green LED, which will tell you when you're spraying. You have a connector here for the orange LED that will tell you when your water level is low inside the tank. You have your manual spray button the OEM button from Subaru, that's this connector. And then you have a connector for auto mode, which is this connector. This is a button blank from a Subaru Forester, the SG chassis. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and put a LED, it's an aluminum face on it. It's a green LED and an orange LED. And I machined them down and trimmed out some of the plastic on the back so that these will fit through the actual holes. And you can actually slip this in, connect it, and you plug them into here. So this is gonna give you your indicator as to when you're actually spraying. And then it's also gonna give you an indicator as to when the water level is actually low on the tank. Now when that happens, when the water level gets low, on the OEM Subaru Auto Mode button, there's an orange light at the top to let you know when you have Auto Mode turned on, or if the tank becomes low and the light goes out on that button. And you can also make it so that an orange LED comes on. So that's generally what this is gonna be set up for, but you can actually set these pins or these wires up to connect to a LED in any area of your car should you want to. You would just have to then wire these to the LED for positive and negative signal. Now onto the longer piece of the harness. 
So you have a three pin connector here that's going to plug into your main harness right here. This will go back to the OEM pigtail that is on the OEM tank from Subaru that comes in an STI. So this is your four pin connector. It's actually sealed in the back since it's around an area that has water. The male side that connects on this side is actually sealed as well. So this is gonna plug in there and that's going to complete this whole setup. Actually go ahead and plug the power one in right here. Coming to your buttons from the main brains of the operation here, your power supply, you've got your boost pressure sensor for auto mode, and then you've got your harness that's gonna go all the way back to the rear of the car or even in the engine bay and connect to your tank through this connector. Now, I trust the Subaru water tank because they come with a Mitsuba water level sensor that's absolutely phenomenal. And they also come with a pump that's in them that's very similar to a um, windshield washer tank pump. That's what I trust and that's why I use these. That's the whole setup right here and it's just we've been testing these for a while now just making sure that they don't burn out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this connected to a power source so we can see what it does when it when it's actually performing. All right, so you can see here that I have my test power supply, which is just a Milwaukee battery in this special adapter here. I have the power and ground alligator clamped and the white wire right here is also clamped to the power so that we can simulate the car being on. Comes in, connects to the main bulk harness right here. The presser switch is hooked up and then it comes through, goes to the buttons. We have our LED indicators turned on. We also have a Forester button housing that sits to the side of the steering wheel right here. And then we have our auto mode button, which is right here. And we have our manual spray button, which is right here. Now, in the event of running these in a Forester, you have two options. Either you get the GC chassis buttons, which are shorter, because you can see these are a little tall, or you remove the face of the button and you trim along the bottom, which I've done in both my car and another Forester that's running this with a front mount setup. From the main bulk harness, we then have this coming out to the tank, goes around to the tank. And what I've set up here is the actual pump pulled from the tank, as well as the water level sensor. Now this being upside down means that there's water in the tank. If I were to flip this over, you can see that we're now running low water level down here with the orange LED. Fill it up, it's back to normal. Now I'm gonna keep that on its side. If I were to go ahead and spray this manually, we'll see the green light comes on for two seconds. And we're pumping. So there you go. That's manual mode. Now let's see what happens when I engage auto mode. So I push this in and auto mode's now turned on. We have an orange light right here built into the JDM Spec C STI auto spray button. If I were to say, oh, water tank is low, that orange light on the button goes out and the orange light on the LED goes on. We actually can't even spray now in auto mode. We could still spray manually, but you would only wanna spray maybe three or four more times from the tank if that's the case. We put this, fill it back up, orange light on the JDM auto spray button comes back on and the orange light over here goes off. So I'm gonna again, leave that off to the side here as if we are full tank, ready to go, ready to spray and see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this pressure sensor hooked up and we're going to create a boost scenario that meets the parameters it's supposed to and actually triggers the whole system. So as you can see, I still have my alligator clamps attaching the main power harness to our power supply over here, our test supply. And what I've hooked up now is I have hooked up a hose to a pump here so that I can simulate boosts. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and I'm gonna set this down to say 15 PSI. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually spray and then detach it to represent letting off the throttle and, and boost no longer being referenced. So when I set that to 15 PSI, you're gonna see this whole system come on. Boom, it hits the 15 PSI, it sprays and auto mode it works like a charm. And again, put this on, off throttle, and there you go. That's how that's all set up.